are going to talk about how to make a point and click adventure game and what good what things can you do to improve the point and click adventure game that you are planning to do or you are going to do. First, a bit about me. I'm Bernard Lopez, I'm founder of Epic Llama Games. I have 10 years of making games already. We started making games for browser, then we switched to mobile, now we are making games for PC. I'm an ambassador of Castle Connect for Latin America. I'm a board member of ADVA, the Argentinian developer organization, and a member of Filmandes, and a very, very bad magician, as you are just checked and be disappointed by my terrible skills. So, Darkest Little Castle is the last game we made. It's a point and click adventure game. It was really good, it, it did very well in, in Steam. Uh, it has 97% of positive rates and uh, have, some, uh, have win several awards and nominations. So, that's the game. It's uh, basically the Nightmare Before Christmas meets Monkey Island 3. It's like really specific. Uh, and that's the end product. And it went really well. So uh, let's talk about the experience there. Now we are making another point and click adventure games that is named Unusual Findings. That it's like uh, the Goonies meet E.T. and meet Predator and meet uh, They Live. The end result is just Stranger Things. So you can check it, it, check it out later and now it's something completely different that is the topic of, the, of this. So. Let's talk about the puzzle design, how to improve your puzzle design and how to make it good. What you should start making, when you are make, designing a puzzle for your point and click adventure game or for any uh, adventure game, you should make charts. They make you happy because you can like organize how you are making the, the puzzle and you can tell your team about how, is, how you are planning to do this puzzle, okay? And, uh, this is how they look. You, they, you can do it in, in 10 minutes in any browser. For instance, the, you pick up a gun, you pick up a bullet, you combine, you combine it, the, the items, they get, get loaded. Use uh, on little Timmy and pick up the little Timmy. Use it on pentagram, talk with Satan, ask about selling a soul, and get infelicious, delicious, free chocolate, calorie free chocolate. That, that's you, you, everyone can understand what are the things that, they, that you should do in, in order to get the end result that is like getting chocolate. So this way, everyone in the team know exactly what, what the end result should do and what the steps the player will play. The bigger the, uh, the, this graphic will become, you know that the puzzle will be more complex, but we will talk about the difficulty curve later. Now, the, the thing is, when you are making a, a point and click adventure game, you should never think that the player already knows how to play your game and uh, take for granted that he knows that, that he has to, for instance, talk or combine an item or whatever. So you always start with a tutorial that it should be part of the story of the game, right? So it should be small and teach everything about the gameplay in the first five minutes of gameplay, for instance. You make uh, p the player that has to pick up a key, combine a talk with a worker, ask for a rust killer, and combine, combine the rust killer with the pick, pick up the, with, the, with the key, and you have a key and then use it on the door. So you see that there, the player learned to grab an item, to talk with someone, to combine an item, and then to use that item in something. So that's exactly what, for instance, in our games, that the, the, the only steps, that the only things that the player can do, that is grab, talk, combine, and use. So it's something like it's really short. You can tell just by looking at the graphics that it's really short, and it's like really, really easy to uh, understand, and the player learn everything right there. Now, about scaling difficulty. Sometimes the people come to me and say, well, I'm making this point-and-click adventure game, I'm making this puzzle game, and I don't know for certain how if, it, if I'm scaling the difficulty too much, or how do I realize that? Well, it's, it's very kind of easy to do. The, the variables that you have is the length of the changes of event that you can have to have an end result. Then the, the quantity of active puzzles that are at the same time. So if you have many puzzles at the same time, you are going to have an inventory full of things. 
And uh, the exclusive uh, items that, if there are any, any exclusive items, what I, what I mean when exclusive items is when you have to pick an item and left another one, that scale the difficulty curve like a lot. And if the solution is like really obscure. For instance, uh, you have to give uh, a fruit to uh, a megabat, megabat eat fruit. No, not everyone knows that, so it's a really obscure solution there. So, scaling difficulty. You start with something like really easy, like pick up a key, you ski on the door, that will be like really easy. Then you have a pick up a, now you have a puzzle that is a bit more complex there. I will not do the everything point by point because we are going to be forever for this other puzzle. So you, by just dying, making those charts that we already talked, you just looking at the chart can realize that, okay, this is becoming harder, harder, and harder. So, uh, make location charts. It helps you to see the possible distribution because some problems that you can make or mistake that you can make is that you, you don't realize but you put all the items in the same place or you don't realize and put this, the item that has the solution in the same place that is the problem and you don't design a pattern for the player to walk around, to roam, to explore the world because everything is just in one place, go to that place, grab everything and start solving. So what you have to do is to make, for instance, this, this is really, really low C chart made with paintbrush, you know, and you have the locations and you know exactly what's the pattern that the player have to do to uh, solve this puzzle. And at the same time, you can show easily to your team how they, what's the distribution. Sometimes when everything is there, it will look like a Spider-Man was shooting waves at it. And it will be really messy, but really messy, but with every color you have the, the like H puzzle that you have. And you know that the player is going to be walking around like a lot to solve that. So, also check for inconsistencies. There should not be as another, possi another, another possibility to solve the puzzle that the one that you are giving. So if you, for instance, I don't know, there is a guy that don't let you in. Uh, and there is a sword, yeah, there. Uh, if you, and you can even grab the sword, uh, there, you should not be able to use it on the guy or if, if you, the player try to use it, you should give a really, really good excuse why he should not be using that. For instance, when he tries to say, oh no, it's much bigger than me, or he have a gun, or whatever, but the thing is, you, there should not be a logical second solution that the one that you are given, because otherwise the bias is going to be pissed about it, yeah? So, for example, soap, is, that's an example for the game that we, that we made. Soap is a terrible lubricant. There was a chain that need lubricant and there was soap there. And a lot of people assumed that soap uh, could be used for, the, for lubricating the chain, but the, that's true, it's terrible lubricant soap. So we, we add the, okay, if you try to use uh, the soap on the chain, they say, no, it's a terrible, terrible lubricant, believe me, I've tried, it's, it's not going to work. Hey, why are you smiling, man? Okay, so, uh, <laughs> number six, the information should be available, okay? If, uh, for instance, you need to, I don't know, some, combine some, elementals, uh, some elements to solve a puzzle, in some place of the, of the game should be that information available, for instance, uh, well, for instance, what, what I tell about the megabat, for instance, that in some place there should be say that, that this kind of bat only eat fruit in a book or in some place, but you don't assume the player know things that are not like super known. For instance, if there is a puzzle that you have to solve by giving a fruit to someone, and that fruit is a tomato, you in some place put that, the, you know that uh, tomato is also a fruit in some place, hiding. So the, if the player don't know that, he can learn it. And it's not like, what do I do with this tomato? Mm -hmm. About writing. Uh, learn the art of saying ninja no. What do, I, what do I mean by that? In a point and click adventure game, you're going to say no like a lot of time. Because it's a, every, the player is going to try to go bananas, grabbing everything and trying to do stuff. So you have to learn how to say no without saying no, because otherwise it's like super negative. You know, because it's, I can do that. I cannot grab that. I, I rather not. I don't like this. I don't like that. You're, I, I hate this guy. It's every, it's every time saying no, 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 no. So, uh, so if you explain the results, you're going to get exactly this, uh, the different approach for the player. For instance, 
I put the, the example, instead of I don't want to put uh, my hand inside the piranha tank, it's something super logical, you say that's a great way to lose a hand. That way you avoid say I don't want or I don't. You just explain, okay, I, it's a great way to lose a hand. The player already knows that it's a bad idea to put the hand there, but you are not saying don't, no, I don't want, I don't like, I don't want to die or whatever. You just explain uh, the, the end result of doing that bad choice that the stupid player is trying to do. So, uh, the main characters. If, when you're writing a main character, it should be interesting. It, uh, you, the player should care about it. it should, that's why we don't want to be a, a nagging guy that is all the time saying no, 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 because the player should care about that guy. It should have positive traits. It, it, positive traits is not that they have to be uh, a good person, but at least have to be smart. It can be ugly, it can be, they have, it, it, in fact, it should be flawed, because flawed characters are much better than perfect characters, that's why people like more, much more Batman over Superman, because Superman is like perfect in every aspect. It can have even magic ventriloquism or something like that, it's really weird, Superman. But Batman is just a guy that dressed like a bat and punch people, that's, it's, 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 by default, it's insane. So, uh, that's people like more Batman, I guess. It's like a millionaire that, that go, go around punching people. So, uh, and the name matters a lot when you're naming your character. It, it should be something that says something to the audience that is playing. So, you cannot uh, name, for instance, the vampire hunter. If it's not comedy, this is the vampire hunter, call it Bob. Because it's like a, a really silly name. For it's a great, if you are writing like a lot, it's a great way to have a, a character spreadsheet when you put the personalities, the passion, secrets, and every relevant subject there. It looks like this, but there you go. Everything that you had need to know about the character. So if there are two people writing in the team, you all know what's the personality of the guy, all know what is the relationship with this, with that, with whatever. So it's, and it, it makes it much easier for you to write. So, another thing when writing, you, the, your character should have a clear motivation of what she's trying to achieve and why. If you got a guy that is just sitting there and no one knows what, why he wants to do that or what is motivating him or what he should do, the player will lose interest because it's like just like a wonder, he's just wandering around and don't know what to do. So, it, it has to be a direction there. When you are writing also, please be, we are really with the bats like a lot, right? Today. So keep in mind of relying in workplace. For instance, uh, a baseball bat and a bat or whatever, if there is a pun about uh, being a confusion between a bat and, a, and another bat, in Spanish, for instance, the, the, the number for bat is murciélago and baseball bat is still a baseball bat. So if when you translate that, it will not make any sense at all. So keep in mind that when you are writing uh, to don't rely on word plays because otherwise when the game got localized it's going to be messed. So, uh, about narrative, favor always experience over uh, movies. Don't let the player fail, let the player, if it's going to be killed in a movie or whatever, to let the player fight a little bit and then he died or, or, the, or the thing that should happen should happen, but try to not take control of the player too often, okay? Uh, favor conversation over monologues, so don't let the guy be like talking by himself all the time. Someone else should, should jump in and sh he should start making a conversation. And if the player can choose what to say, it's much better because the player is there to have agency. So you have to give the player agency and that's what he's looking for. And don't forget the user interface is part of the narrative. Don't leave a blank user interface when you are making a point and click adventure game and leave, oh no, it's okay because the old ones did that, that they were just buttons. But no, it's not good to forget about the user interface. Try the user interface have to say something about the game, about the experience, about everything that is going on around. So about graphics, uh, be word of the artistic liberties. The artists tend to be a crazy guy who likes to add details, crazy details all over the place. And uh, we will talk about later about that. Uh, give reference, do sketches, like silly sketches, no matter what, just put reference all over the place on the, on to, for your artist so he doesn't screw up adding details. For, for instance, he make this treasure chest and he put the sword there. The player is going to try to grab the sword or 
whatever is coming off the chest and if the, it's not meant to be there, you have, will have a problem. So it's very good to, to tell your artist to please do exactly what is on the, uh, the reference that you gave him and double check everything because otherwise you're going to have a background that the player is going to try to use and when he realizes that he can use it, it's going to be pissed about you and he's going to write a negative uh, review about your game and you don't want that. That's the only thing that you don't want. So for instance, that's our one of the sketches that we do. It's, it's something like really simple, just Google images of what you want and put it there and just be very specific about what you, you want. It's in Spanish, so you don't understand, but it, that's part of my evil scheme, whatever. So. <laughs> Be minded about multi ratio screens, yeah, right? If, if the camera, if there's a room that the camera doesn't move, don't put many things in the sides. Don't put things in the sides that the player have to, ch to use. Otherwise, when you do uh, the change the ratio of the screen, it's going to be, you are going to be screwed. And uh, uh, be sure you don't make the scene like too small because otherwise you are going to end with like black, like black part patches on the sides. About uh, pixel hunting, beware of the pixel hunting. The, yeah, unless your game is uh, about pixel hunt, try to don't make uh, your game full of things that are like hiding around. Uh, aware, a, a great way to avoid this is just adding a button that when you play everything that you can interact that highlight or something appears there. But if you don't have that thing, make the, the region that the player can, even if it's a really small, uh, small key, give it a wider area for interaction. So the player then is around aiming like crazy looking where is the things that I should use. Because the, these games are not about finding, hiding, it, it's not a hidden object game, it's about solving puzzles and having experience and uh, having fun with it. So, I give a lot of really, really boring, boring, boring advice, but making a point and click adventure game, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, it's a really great way to make your t your team go together because you need to interact with <coughs> the artist a lot. You need to interact with the programmers a lot about what they have to expect because it's very specific, and it's a lot of fun. So uh, I think that I I was shorter than I expected. I, I think uh, that's it. If you have any questions, just contact me there or not at epiclamagains.com. I will contact. I will answer every question but not why this is, is that animal there. <laughs> so, okay, well, thanks a lot. You're a lovely audience, and I don't know, see you later, or what, if you have a question? How do you approach, uh, like, testing your uh, puzzles, on, on, you know, playtesting your puzzles, since if you think that this is obvious, your team thinks it is obvious, and then you'll find, like, thousands of players who, will want, who won't understand it at all? Yeah, that the thing is, you should, uh, when you have, like, the earliest build available, you show it to everyone. I mean, to everyone, it's not like you publish it, but whenever you find someone, you just go, for instance, for, for this event, you just put the game and say, okay, I want, I want to show you this, and you see what is going on, where, where they are like, okay, I, and you are going to get a lot of feedback, and you change. It's very important always that you show what you are doing, even when it's just, uh, for instance, just the, 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 the writing, the script, just the script, to send to a friend, the, also like narrative, yeah, and uh, they would read it and they give you your, his opinion and since this is about telling something to an audience, it's very important to have a, the, the opinion of, of, of many people as possible. Of course, you, you are going to end up with, I mean, the, the last word, you have the last word, but it's very important to listen what the other people have to say and don't be stubborn if you, you, if you check that uh, more than four people is already pointing that they, it's really hard to find this or I have no idea about this thing. Change the things in a way that everyone enjoy. Because the thing in the end, it's not about you getting away and haha, I made something really hard. You should, that should never be the approach. It should be haha, you have a lot of fun. You, you are great. I mean, the player should, be set, should feel like, oh, I'm great at this. Oh, yeah, I solved this. I solved. But uh, it's because you, you want him to enjoy. That's, that's the bottom line, I guess. So, uh, so you said you uh, made browser games, you yes. made mobile games, and you uh, switched back to PC. Yeah. Uh, I have two questions. Were they all like point and click games? And no. which market proved like the best for that kind of content? Okay. 
Well, that's a great question. We don't make all point and click adventure games. We make, and in 10 years, we like, like, I don't know, like 15 games or something. And we made every game that you can imagine. We do uh, uh, RPGs, we do uh, car games, we do dress up games, we make a, a, a game about dressing up a pony, yeah. a lovely pony. And uh, yeah, I love it. Well, and uh, I mean, we make a lot of games. And about the market that you are asking, I think I think right now you yeah, the thing is you are going to go I, I guess PC. I mean, uh, for this kind of point and click adventure games, and maybe also uh, a mobile. If, if you, I mean, I really recommend using Unity because you uh, you are open to everything, and you can. Uh, I mean, if you do it properly, you are going to be able to port it. Really easy. I mean, uh, the, you, the only thing that you can change is maybe tweak a bit uh, some user interface thing that you are going to do like really quick, and that's it. You have it for mobile, you have it for PC, and you have it for, for instance, our game was ported to Switch, was ported to Xbox, and uh, it was for like, uh, I mean, we just, yeah, it was like super quick, and everyone can do it. I mean, you just give it to someone and they, will do it for you. I mean, a publisher did the switch porting and he did it in like a week or something or less. Okay. I'm just wondering, um, so you make point and click games. Yes. Uh, they are very narrative focused. I'm just wondering how, what does your creative process look like? So um, is it like you sitting down and thinking about the story or is it more of a brainstorm kind of process? No, what, what does it look like? What you should do when you are uh, like uh, having a direction, for instance, for the write writing, you consume. You consume 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 what you what 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 is decided that, for instance if you think that okay i will do a, for instance a point a retro game for instance you consume everything that is for instance for the 80s well, that's what we did with the last game we were making a point and click adventure game that is all about the 80s it's all about nostalgia in the end it's targeting the audience in the, the hitting in the nostalgia kidney a lot so the idea is we consume a lot of 80s things, and then uh, the ideas come just by, because, I mean, the creative process is always you remix something in your head that you already saw, okay? So you just take this from here, this from here, this from here, this from here, this from here. The, the better way to do that is just have a lot of things available that are in the same direction. So you, you get what I'm trying to say, okay? So you, you consume a lot of things that looks the way that you want your product to look, and that way you are going to have good ideas to keep it in the same direction. How, how do they uh, uh, understand that the game will be interesting for publishers? Oh, yeah. how the I don't. You, you understand. How that do you understand that yeah. it will be interesting for a publisher? For publishers. Okay, yeah, the thing is that what you usually do is just look for publishers that have already some uh, connection with the point and click adventure games, for instance and then you contact them. And uh, the thing is, any publisher could be interested in this kind of game because if they sell and they look good, I mean, there's money, so cool, good for them. The thing is, you can like look directly for point and click adventure publisher, but you, never f you should never forget your shotgun and go around shooting every publisher that you think that they have a target audience, that it's the same target audience, because maybe they don't do point and click adventure games, but they are, the, for instance, they are looking for an older audience because this kind of game is not, it's not a kid game, for instance. So you try to go out for publishers that are, are kind of in the same, in the same consumer field and your thing. Okay, that, ah, thank you for your question. Okay, okay, that's thank it. you. Thank you. It. Yeah, thank you. It was great to have you here, guys. I love you. <laughs>